know what the enemy is after in these last days? He is after your testimony. He's wanting Christians to be a bunch of fakes and a phonies to say, look, they don't even want what they preach. And he is after your testimony. So what God has done for you in your life, you better guard it. You need to put on the whole armor of God. You need to put on your whole robe of righteousness. We see people that were once preaching. They're not preaching anymore. Once that were delivered from alcohol and drugs, they're back on it again and doing worse than they ever were before. Sin will take you further than you ever thought you would go. So you got to put on the whole armor of God, the whole fight, your new man, and stay out of the spiritual graveyard. Because don't ever get to the point in your life and say, well, that doesn't apply for me. I'm Mr. and Miss Super Christian. Hey, it happens. He hates pride too. So you got to be careful because we're living in the last days and the enemy knows your weakness. And you'll look at your life one day and say, how in the, mor- how in the world did that happen? But you know the good thing is when we blow it and we mess up, it's never too late. His mercy and his grace is new every day. And he says, honey, come on back. Come on back. Learn from your mistakes. Come on back. The next thing about the demoniac is he cut himself. He cut himself. In the Old Testament, this referred to Baal worship. You remember when Elijah called all the prophets of Baal to Mount Carmel and he said the one God that answers by fire will be the one true God? And the Baal worshipers got out there and they said, oh, Baal! And there was no Baal. I mean, there was no fire. And then they started dancing wildly and they started cutting themselves. But no fire because we have one God And that's Jesus Christ. Now, we are that new man. But there are people today that cut themselves. And it's called demonic oppression. You may know people. Some of you watching by TV, it may be you. And what it is, is they think it will relieve the pain. They got so much emotional pain. Sometimes they feel numb. I'm talking to some of you on TV. That you don't feel anything. So when you cut yourself... You feel like you're at least feeling something again. But unfortunately, this leads to other spirits, which can lead to um, addictions. But ultimately, what the devil wants to do is to kill you. He wants it to lead to suicide. And I'm talking to some of you. I read somewhere there was a pastor. He lost his daughter to suicide. And since the last, since 1999, suicide has increased 30%. That's a lot. Because life is hard and there's a lot of stuff going on. So if you need help, you find somebody to talk to. We as Christians can't just be, there's pastors committing suicide. People have got to find somebody to talk to. There are people that will help you. So if you've thought about that, don't you dare do it. Find somebody to talk to. Jesus Christ, you have hope. Some of you feel like you're all alone and you have no hope. It's no accident you're watching this show. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Don't you dare do it. Don't you dare do it. But cutting now, y'all, what I want y'all to understand, I am not preaching against tattoos, okay? I'm not saying that because now it's kind of the thing to do and everybody wants a tattoo and it's art and I don't personally like it. Both of my sons have tattoos and I said, when y'all get old my, like me, your bat wings are going to start flapping. Y'all know what bat wings are? <laughs> I said, they're going to be flapping in the wind. <laughs> and they say, oh, mama. But that's not, I'm, not, I'm not referring to that, but I read a story where this one man said he had cutting. He cut. And he said if he could afford it, he would get pa- tattoos all over his body because he loved the pain. Isn't it painful? I've never had one. I've heard it's painful. I can't imagine all over your body and love and pain. But that tells you there's hurt. People are hurting. 
People are wounded. But Jesus is our hope. Amen. So the next thing is this demoniac starts running toward Jesus. He starts running. I didn't know if he wanted to be set free or he thought he would scare him, but he was running toward Jesus. But those demons started shrieking. Y'all like the sound effects? <laughs> hey, the devil still shrieks today. And he's shrieking pretty loud in the world. All you got to do is open your ears. But demonic demons can't stand where the presence of the Lord is. They get very uncomfortable. But you know what? They need to be uncomfortable. Because it's the presence of the Lord that's going to set people free. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's going to set people free. And people, Jesus wants you free. All right, let's go on. The next thing, Jesus said, what's your name? And he said, Legion. Well, first of all, Legion is not a name. Legion is a number. This is one of the largest rankings of the Roman soldiers, 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers. Now, that's a lot of demons, isn't it? So, you do not have to ask a demon its name. It will lie. Have you, any, any of y'all ever cast out a demon? You're like, no, please. please. Hey, they're out there. But a lot of times, people just need deliverance through the Word of God and through prayer, and we're going to talk about that too. So he said his name was Legion. And they, the demons started begging, don't send us into hell, we're not ready, you know. And they knew that Jesus wasn't going to send them back into other people. And they said, well, send us into those 2,000 pigs that are grazing on the cliff. So Jesus sent those demons into those 2,000 pigs. They jumped over, went into the water, and drowned. And this man was set free. Can you imagine being bound all these years? This man was sitting at the feet of Jesus, free. And you would think everybody in the city would be happy. But no. Even though they were in fear of this, this man, it was their livelihood. They were Gentiles. They loved pork chops. They love sausage and bacon. And some of you are saying, I'm a Gentile. <laughs> That's me. Oh, they were not low carbon. They were high carbon with pork, weren't they? But that was, they wanted to see him bound because it was their livelihood. And there are people that are profiting off your bondage, whatever it may be. And you may say, well, I don't have any bondages. Well, can I meet you? Because we all have weaknesses. Hey, if it's food, we're going to find the commercials, aren't we? It's the TV's fault. Have you ever seen such giant cheeseburgers in your life? And ice cream that is just the land of Dairy Queen that is flowing into your den. Hey, they know how to get us hooked on stuff. Marketing companies know exactly when to get you hooked on stuff so they can make money off of you and they want to see you bound, then be set free. Another thing is that these people were afraid of the supernatural. We're living in a world that the devil's people love supernatural. And he is working overtime out there in his world, the devil. But the problem with the church is many people are afraid of the supernatural. We're afraid of speaking in tongues. We're afraid of gifts of the Spirit. We're afraid of anointing with oil. We have a fear. While the devil's working overtime on his kingdom out there, we're living in fear. Well, we serve a supernatural God. He's not a natural God. He is a supernatural, miracle-working God. And the problem is we're trying to make God more like us instead of the supernatural God that we serve. We're trying to figure out how our miracle is going to take place. How many of you know it don't ever happen that way? 
But we're living in a time now that I believe we're going to see more miracle signs and wonders than ever before. And these miracles are going to bring unbelievers to the cross, and it's going to make believers out of believers. Because we're living in a time now we don't really believe what we preach. That is the truth. It comes out of our mouth, but it's not in our heart. And so the Lord is going to make believers out of believers. And we're seeing more miracle signs and wonders than ever before. And this is just the beginning of what God's going to do. So this man wanted to get in the boat with Jesus. Don't you know he was ready to get out of there? (laughs) Take me away from the graveyard. But Jesus said, no, you stay here and tell everybody what I've done for you. As I mentioned earlier, there was other boats on the lake that day. Just imagine how they felt when they were in the middle of a storm and then all of a sudden, peace be still. See, people are watching you in your storm. They're seeing, you know, it's easy to preach about faith, to sing about faith, to have faith for everybody else. But how do you respond in your storms? People are watching you. And when they see that you don't, they don't know, that this woman should have been dead. How are they still here? They're going to want what you got. And that is Jesus Christ. He'll give you peace in any storm. The waves can be coming in, but you're at peace. The rains can be even coming in, but you're at peace. Why? You know you belong to Jesus. And you're in a win-win situation because you belong to him. So just like Jesus told this demoniac, go tell somebody what I've done for you. Has God been good to you? If the redeemed of the Lord needs to say so. See, some of you need to share your testimony with other people because your testimony will change more lives than the best of preachers. But see, what the enemy wants to tell you is what if the sickness comes back? What if I really wasn't delivered? I'm too shy. People won't believe me. Hey, this world is looking for real. They're so tired of fakes. They're so tired of phonies. They want to see real people that have a real encounter with a real God. And I think one of the greatest compliments that anybody ever gives me is that you're real. She's real and she's country, but she's the real deal. What you see is what you get. And I made that promise to the Lord whenever we got on television. I said, I won't be airbrushed. I'm going to preach the word like you give it to me. Because people need Jesus. And he wants you free. He wants you free. No matter what kind of bondage you're in right now. He wants you free. Some of you may be going through a horrible storm. And you feel all alone. Well, this is the time you need to find you some godly friends that will not judge you, but that will be there with you in the storms of life. And as I was thinking about this message and the storms of life, I I read an interesting fact about the redwoods. Have you ever seen the redwood trees? I've never seen them, but I'd like to see the redwoods one day. That's on my bucket list. But if you think about those trees, they're huge. They're like 350 feet tall. But they got a shallow root system, only five or six feet for such a huge tree. But what they said is these redwoods, their roots can grow like 100 feet out. Now, my redwoods need to start making their way over here. So what happens is these roots start intertwining together. So when the winds come, they intertwine together. So, okay, my redwoods, y'all come on. Let's get a few on this sign. All right, I need, uh, yeah, y'all all just line up here. Here we go. 
But see, what happens in these storms, these redwoods grow in groves. And these roots come together. So a strong storm, they don't go anywhere. They bond together. And not only that, they withstand storms. They withstand wind. So I'm telling you, when the winds may blow, but you got some godly friends that are praying and believing with you, you may, hey, these may not look like redwoods. They're all pretty short for me, redwoods, but y'all just imagine they're redwoods, okay? <laughs> but they're going through the storms and the winds are blowing. But when you can say, I'm here with you, sister. I'm here with you, sister. You're gonna make it through this storm. You will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I speak life into you. You can make it through this storm. You're not going under this time. There is, when we're in corporately together having faith, because there's a time when you're physically ill, you don't feel like you have faith. That's when you gotta have somebody joining with you. And the Roman soldiers, when they were in battle, we know that the shield of faith was like the size of a door. But a lot of times when they marched toward the enemy, they were joined together with their shields of faith, like my redwood trees here. But what would happen with these shields, they would be so bright that when the sun hit it, hit it, it would be brilliant and it would blind the soldiers. The army, the enemy would have to flee. So when we come together as faith Christians and we put our shields of faith together and know that we are in a battle, but we serve the most high God. We take authority over Satan. We put you under our feet where you belong because freedom belongs to us. Amen, amen. Thank y'all Redwood, y'all did good. Miracle in the making. Some of you right now are on the verge of the greatest miracle in your life. And you thought, Lord, what, what is the purpose of what I'm going through? Well, friends, your pain becomes your purpose. Whatever pains you becomes your purpose to minister to someone else. If you never had pain, I don't know where you live <laughs> because your pain can be used as a testimony to bring hope to other hurting people. Miracle in the making. I believe this is your day that you're going to receive your breakthrough and your miracle. You watching by television, it's no accident that you're watching. This is your day for your miracle. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus and be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Our ministry is to spread the hope of Jesus to this hurting world through the media. Television is very expensive, but so worth it. Have you ever wondered, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Do I have a purpose? Can I make a difference in someone's life? Well, friends, you can. By partnering with us, you can touch people's lives all over, and this world needs Jesus. If you would consider partnering with us, you can make a donation through our website, sandrahancock.org, or through the address that's on the screen, or you can even call us at 1-800-579-7350. I want to thank you in advance for being a blessing. I pray this message blessed you and you understand the storms of life are making you stronger. And some of you are thinking, I should be really strong by now. But you, your miracle is on the way, my friends. We've got a very special segment in our show that's called Hope is on the Way. And what it's doing, it's so showing us the praise reports of what God has done in lives. This is to increase your faith because after this testimony, I'm going to pray for the sick and I'm going to believe you're going to recover in the name of Jesus. Um, about, I guess, three months ago, I was in here, and um, the doctors said I had the cirrhosis was, was bad on my liver, and um, we did a CAT scan, and um, and then I, we, we prayed, and I went back and had another test because the doctor said we need to do an ultrasound to make sure 
Okay? And so when I went back to a follow-up, I sat there and he, I said, so there's no cirrhosis? He said, that's what they said. So he did an ultrasound to make sure. <laughs> he, was, he, was very, <laughs> he, was, he was very doubtful. I mean, he sounded very doubtful. And there's nothing. Okay. Um, and then the second time, I, that was the first time I came here. And the second time I asked um, for something else, um, deliverance. And God delivered me. Amen. Give it up for the Lord. He's a miracle working God. All of you that need physical healing in your body, I feel led to pray for you today because we still serve a supernatural miracle working God. We've got to understand he's supernatural. We try to make God a natural God. He's a supernatural God. He still heals. He still performs miracles. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to send the Word of God forth. I want you to touch your body wherever you're hurting. And I'm just going to believe the Lord is going to touch you right where you are. Lord, I lift up everyone that is watching this show that needs healing in their bodies. Jesus, Psalms 107.20 said, You sent your Word and healed the sick and saved us from destruction. Lord, your Word tells us that by your stripes... We are healed. So I send the word of God into every person and I send by the authority of Jesus, your healing power, that Lord, you're touching their bodies right now, that you're touching them, healing them, setting them free. Those that are in bondage to uh, oppressed by, by uh, d discouragement and those that are oppressed by depression, that Lord, you just wrap your arms around them and give them peace right now physically healed. Those that are bound by drugs and alcohol, Lord, set them free or any kind of bondage. Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Friends, increase your faith to believe. See, healings are a process. Sometimes you may not feel healed, but you continue to speak the Word of God and you walk by faith. And usually what happens is after a while you find out, I am healed. Miracles take place suddenly. That's what we all want. Anyway, Jesus wants to do it. He's the healer. Let us know about it. I know we're going to hear some praise reports. If you're watching this show and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or maybe you did, maybe you watched the show and we talked about the spiritual graveyard. You were once so on fire for Jesus, but you started hanging with the wrong people. You started going to places you didn't need to go. And now you found yourself where you just really feel like you're not even saved anymore. If that's you, Jesus loves you. And he's saying, come on back. That's what the blood of Jesus is all about. And if that's you, pick up the phone, call the 1-800 number, and you can. we'll just lead you to Jesus. Hey, we'll always have storms in life. But when we have Jesus, you'll never be alone. He's always with you. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we could use your help right now. Television is expensive. Uh, it is very expensive, and we feel led to get on more channels so we can reach more people with Jesus. I feel like we have a window of opportunity now that we need to touch as many people as we can and we could use your help. And uh, the information's on the screen. Now, next week, we're going to have a brand new show, a brand new message. Don't you dare miss it. Tell your friends about it. Connect with us on, on Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus. Liberty.